Hello and a very warm welcome back to KGC Engineering and today is a big day in our mini project because we're finally going to be getting the engine and gearbox out. Uh, it's a big job, it's probably going to take us all day so this whole video is going to be dedicated to getting the engine and gearbox out. I'm going to take you through literally step by step on doing every single nut and bolt to hopefully release it and uh, hopefully by the end of the day we'll have the engine out. So let's get started. As I mentioned in the last video, um, I've started to strip out the engine bay, uh, so I've got rid of a lot of the stuff that's going to be in the way of getting uh, this engine out. And I made a decision that um, I wasn't going to take out the radiator because it's attached to the engine block um, and the engine mount, so it's just going to be easier to unbolt those parts to then lift it out. Um, obviously the gearbox is part of uh, the whole unit as one, so that'll be coming out with it. So let's have a quick look around and see what we need to do. Well, we've got starters first, we've got the engine steady here. So this needs to be unbolted either at this end or that end, because uh, we also have the engine earth strap there, so that needs to come off. Uh, we have the clutch uh, slave cylinder connection. We're probably just going to cut that hose with uh, just a pair of cutters uh, just to make it easier. Um, if we look further down the back here, um, I undid the manifold uh, in the last video and it is actually still connected right right down the bottom. You might just be able to see there's a nut and bolt right down the bottom there. Um, and we're going to undo that. Um, we probably w still won't be able to get the exhaust manifold off, um, but it will just give us a little bit more freedom of movement uh, for it to, you know, for us to allow the engine to come out. So if we look around uh, this side here, we've got these heater pipes, they're going to come out with it because uh, we're all connected to it and again we've just got the radiator and it is connected to the engine down at the bottom down here, which hopefully we'll be able to sort of see now because this is, uh, there's two bolts here, um, one on each side which are the engine mounts onto the subframe, so we're going to undo those uh, which will then allow us to obviously extract uh, the engine but you can see the, the bottom of the radiator comes down it connects onto here I can't really see to get in there properly to get uh, the radiator bracket off uh, but maybe able to get to that bolt but I'm not too sure we're going to see how we go if we need to undo something we may be able to get a bit more space later on to be able to undo it if we need to um, we need to also push the alternator down or we could even take it off out of the way. Um, we've got other straps here, we've got cable there, we've got the <coughs> excuse me, the, sol the main battery cable to the solenoid here for the starter so that needs to be disconnected um, and again it's the same with the two bolts on the subframe which are buried right in there somewhere uh, which we'll get to from the underside. Now additionally to that, if we now head under the car, and you can see it's already dripping a bit of coolant, we have the, um, let's try and get in a better position so we can see, under here, uh, we can, well you can now hopefully be able to see the bolt I mentioned for the exhaust which is here, so we need to get this bolt undone here, and let's bring the camera around a little bit more, we've actually got the, the drive shaft boots here. Now we need to undo these, we can do, undo these from the underside, um, it should just be a, a clip on each, on each one, there's one each side of the engine, so we need to undo those um, so that um, the drive shafts will pop out as the engine comes up. And as well as that, I've just noticed as well, we've actually got uh, the lower engine steady, which is here, which goes onto the subframe, so we need to disconnect that here at this point. Uh, which will make it easier um, and that in theory should be everything that needs disconnecting obviously there's going to be something that's going to get in the way it's always the way when it comes to big jobs like this uh, when we start actually getting it all out um, but we'll just see how we go so th those are the like I said those are the bits that we need disconnecting so I'll set this up on time lapse and start to uh, getting all the bits apart.
Well, hopefully in that time lapse um, sequence, we'll have seen that we've got the vast majority of the bits undone. We've still got the, um, the clutch slave cylinder pipe to cut, um, and we've also got the engine mountings. But the engine now is, as you can hopefully see there, quite uh, loose. So before we take anything else off, we're going to attach the crane, the <coughs> excuse me, the engine crane to it, um, so that it just helps keep it in a stable, well, a more stable position, let's say, um, and it also means that whilst we're working on the underside, getting the um, engine mounting bolts off, uh, so hopefully unscrew. If not, I've got the grinder set up ready to cut them. Um, we can. It, it's not going to. The, the engine's not going to start getting in the way. It's not going to try and start falling all over the place um, and making things difficult. So I'm just attaching the brackets for the hoist. So that's those two brackets on. Now these um, are very useful uh, things to have because not all engines have um, lifting eyes fit to, fitted to them. Because some of them have them uh, fitted as part of the other brackets for, to hold other bits on, uh, and that's how you can use those. Um, but generally, the A series engines, um, it's just the through the rocker cover uh, studs through there to hold it all up. So now put the adjuster on. This will allow us to balance things out uh, and also joins it all together a bit neater for the actual uh, crane itself. Just go together. So what I can do now is bring the crane in. So we'll get it to a sort of suitable spot over the centre of it. Uh, and obviously you've got to go up quite a bit yet, so I'll uh, just bump it up. Remember, at this point, we're not trying to lift the engine out just yet. We're just getting um, the crane to take a bit of the weight, um, just to help stop it moving about too much. And it also allows to see if it's uh, a bit more balanced as well. Line that along, that 
all uh, hopefully level out a bit more on there. I'll turn those the other way around as well. And so that should be a little bit more level. We want it to come up fairly level. It doesn't need to be perfectly level. It might help us to have a bit of an angle on it. Um, but for now, we know that's just going to help hold the engine in place. It's not going to try and go anywhere. Um, so we can now work on it in a more safe uh, way. Uh, so I'll get the um, engine mounts off hopefully unbolted um, and then should just be that uh, clutch cable I think and that'll be uh, ready to lift. I'm just under the, um, the driver's side uh, of the car now and these two uh, nuts here, there we go, these two nuts here are for the engine mounts um, for the bolts and it is a case of hopefully these should uh, unscrew without any problems. But like I say, I, had, I do have the grinder ready um, should it be required. Because uh, I'm hoping that with the weight of the engine on it, it's not going to spin the bolt uh, too much. So that one's come off quite happily. Um, try the other one. Oh, that's stiff. Let's try to do it one handed a bit. I'm not sure if that uh, span with it then. Yes, you see, that one is actually spinning around annoyingly. Hopefully, you might just be able to see that it is all spinning as one. So, uh, what we're going to have to do is probably cut that one off. Because um, I can't really see uh, in here, I don't think. I'll just put the lamp on, see if I can see as it is uh, right down in here somewhere. So I'm just trying to get the lamp in there with the camera in the way as well. Uh, down uh, there somewhere. That's it there. That's the. Uh, bolt that's spinning there. Uh, now I may be able to squeeze a spanner onto it so I'll give that a go. Uh, but if not I'll just cut it off uh, with the angle grinder. Alright well in the end I only had to um, angle grind um, the two bolts on this side here because uh, they just, they're just weren't going to go and I just can't get to the bolt the, the nuts on the other side of them so they got chopped off and they've been punched through. Um, I've cut the hose for the uh, clutch slave cylinder. So essentially everything now should be off. We have got one bolt uh, loosely still in because it's just been a bit awkward to wiggle out, but it is wiggling a bit. So I'm hoping that if I can give a bit of lift now, um, we're gonna be able to hopefully pop that out and we might start uh, getting somewhere. Of course, the body's going to go up with it initially while we take the weight off it. All right. Now that, that moved, let's just see if that uh, bolt will pop out. It's getting nearer. Go on. That's there, I think. There we go. That's it, that's that bolt out, so we don't need to worry about that. Right, so let's just see if uh, it'll continue to go up now. Just gotta constantly sort of watch out for bits that may jump and get in the way. Because there's inevitably gonna be something that I will have forgotten to have taken out, I'm sure. Uh, it nearly always it is, so just keep an eye on things. Uh, 
one seems to be not quite sure what that was. Ah, that's all right. It was that um, bit of gearbox uh, selector linkage uh, where I couldn't get the bolt off the other day. Uh, I think it was the last video. I couldn't get it off. It was that. Okay, let's just keep going up a little bit. Now it looks quite promising at the moment. The only thing I'm a little concerned about is um, the manifold to the exhaust. Seems to be possibly the thing that's stopping it now. Like I said, I've never whoop, taken one of these out before. Um, so I'm kind of hoping it's going to go relatively easily. I'm just trying to get that to. Uh, Manifold into a slightly better position if I can. <clears throat> Crowbar in, let's see if we can just wiggle that over somehow. Holding it, I think it is this manifold, so let's just drop that down the tab. That'll just allow us to free it up a minute. Try and see if there's an easy way I could quickly tie that back up to something just to help hold it sort of uh, in a position out of the way. Um, just have a well, unless it goes there, let's, let's just try that. to wire or something to hold the tank away. <clears throat> Luckily there's not a lot of stuff actually uh, in the way now. We took a lot of stuff out of the way of all the wiring and stuff uh, the other day so hoping that uh, let's get this bit of wire around the manifold here it's just gonna hopefully stop it going too far and getting in the way too much all right let's give that a go
still not catching something. Not too sure what, that's the problem. Like I said, I'm sure there'll be some mini experts out there who'll go, oh, it's dead easy to take one of these out. You just do this, that, and the other, and away it goes. <coughs> but, uh, we will indeed see what happens. Just trying to just spot if there's anything obvious uh, that's just stopping it. Uh, it doesn't appear so at the moment. I'm sure it will get to a uh, certain point and then probably jump up and scare the living daylights out of me as it pops up. Uh, <clears throat> so, there doesn't appear to be anything. It's much in the way. I think what's actually holding it in at the moment is actually the, uh, the drive shafts. So they, they are supposed to just pop out. Uh, for a better phrase. But inevitably, they don't always want to do that. Uh, I can see that one of them's gone. So, I think the other one has as well. So this is uh, awkward at times taking engines out. They don't always want to behave and come out. But yes, we've got, uh, got a drive shaft still in. It doesn't want to behave itself. That's a bit frustrating. wiggle here and there it's gonna go. It will come out of here. Went in at some point it will uh, come out again. Ah, now then it's not the manifold is it? Not the manifold again, surely. Let's just drop back down again. Feeling that this might get in the way of it. Falling down. 
Come on, let's not be silly. Any more. Have fun and games for one day. And start behaving now. right back down again and see what is up with it there's obviously something decided that it's not going to let it go I do think it is these drive shafts which is a bit annoying really um, they are just supposed to pop out but again there's probably you know, someone to say oh we're taking thousands of mini engines out they always pop out mid easily well unfortunately some joint. This one isn't today. So they're not giving us the room to anyway. Nor does it appear to have the want. one of them off. Just did that by spinning the wheel around. So does that provide us with a bit of movement this way? Hey, there we go. <laughs> that was the other drive shaft popping out. Right, let's carry on up. when this goes back in there'll be a lot uh, fewer things on it. Right, I have a feeling that the manifolds again are going to try and get in the way. I'll try and avoid that. Just watching out for any more cables or anything. I'm inevitably going to get in our way. so it drops down a bit more. Let's head north. So there we hope we've all hope we've got just enough clearance for the engine crane. Which I think we're gonna have. Hey! Stop spinning all over the place. Right, I think we've got some clearance. I'll just wipe it a little bit more if I can. Alright, now I spy another cable. 
coming along here. Uh, oh yeah, that's just the accelerator cable. But uh, could have been something more. No, that's everything off there now. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to sort of see this now. So we've got the engine out here. So I'll just move the camera back a bit. Um, <coughs> So there we are, you can see the engine's well and truly clear. I'm just going to pull it very gently back, bit by bit. Gearbox uh, stay, which I couldn't get off yesterday or the, on the last video, so I've put that out of the way now. Right, next job is to uh, obviously lower it down onto a suitable uh, dolly, which I've got one available somewhere. <coughs> Get it uh, down from this rather precarious height, uh, a bit more manageable, and then uh, manoeuvre around a bit. Gearbox today. <laughs> right, that's a bit more of a manageable height. I'm really going to have to tie that up somehow. That's going to get on my nerves. Right. So now. There's never enough room to do anything. the water out. Actually what we need to do is get it on the ground, move the beam up and uh, get it on there. I think we need a better position. With the green first. Uh, right, let's go back up again. As you can see, I'm making this up completely as I go along. Sometimes it's a good thing, otherwise it's a bad thing. But Down 
down on the ground. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the arm of the crane out along here so it gives us enough uh, space just to get it, the engine onto this uh, dolly a bit better because the dolly just doesn't quite fit in the gap between the, the crane legs uh, annoyingly um, but one of those things uh, so that's one done find the next hole to where it is. to get that pin out of there for that linkage because it's done nothing but getting away and being frustrating today but not to worry we're winning Slide the body underneath now. Slide the body underneath. Well, oh, it's on there a bit better by the looks of things. Oh, yes. That should be fine. So now we can drop it down. Onto the dolly. Lights off, and there we go. So, all that's left now is to uh, put the crane away and tie that down onto the dolly. Whew. Oh, I've gone and got myself some bits of rope. Uh, basically, all I'm going to do is just um, tie the engine down to the dolly, just so that when we move it around, it's not going to be going anywhere. I mean it's relatively stable on there but I just know that if I don't tie it down inevitably it's going to go sideways at some point um, and it's not going to end well. So a bit of belt and braces to just put a bit of um, you know, a bit of rope on just to stop it going anywhere. Just makes perfect sense uh, and that because well, what's, what's the point in risking it? Why, why would you why would you risk um, you know, not it not being together um, and safe to manoeuvre properly? Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be the most fanciest uh, knots and things. Just enough to just hold it on there, so it's not going to be going anywhere particularly fast. All that it needs, and once I've done that, we can start getting the crane bits off, uh, which will be a good step. On through there, all I'm doing is just finding some 
little bits and areas where we can sort of strap it down essentially. I'm not the best at tying knots, but uh, I'm sure they'll do the job for what I need them to do. Not too much uh, worry. Just try to find somewhere for them to go on to at times. It can be a bit awkward. I'm fairly happy with that now that that's not going to be going too far. If it does decide to go, um, obviously you sort of stand back and let it go. Um, but I'm hoping that with the bits of rope on it for the time being, is going to be enough to just help hold it more or less in place without it trying to go anywhere particularly fast. Uh, you know, so we can always catch it in time if we need to. I'm quite pleased generally at how well this has uh, come out of here because it's the, uh, the first engine I've taken out of a mini. Uh, Mr. Box. Um, you know, so I'm quite pleased with that, which is a good thing. It's relatively simple and easy to do. Um, there weren't any major problems. It all came apart quite happily, it seemed to behave itself. And that which is always good. Yeah, so there's nothing worrying or anything. It's, it all went remarkably well. And sometimes you do get engines that just don't want to come out. And if you look at the, if you watch the video of the Morris Minor four door, um, when I took the engine out of that, I did make a few mistakes on that. Although I, I hold my hands up, I made a few mistakes with that. Um, but we got there in the end with it. Um, uh, and, and sometimes you do have to sort of make mistakes because you forget these things because you've not taken them out for such a long time or you've got other things going on which distract you but uh, generally I'm um, quite pleased with today's efforts so all that really remains now um, is to get all the other bits and pieces off, so we've got the exhaust manifold to drag out, um, we've got the wiper system's got to come out, there's a few bits on the inner wings, uh, well, and in the wings let's say, um, some air hoses, there's a fan on the other side, um, some more of the brake and clutch equipment's got to come out, yeah, uh, and then obviously we've got to get it off the subpro, so we're very, very close to having this car ready to go for dipping now, um, so yes, I'm very, very pleased. Well, like I just said, um, all that's left in here now, as you can hopefully see, is um, the final bits for the brake pipes, which are down there, um, there's the brake and clutch mechanism, so there's all the pedals to take out yet, um, there's a fuse box there, there's the wiper motors, to come out which is over here um, there's the rest of the fuel pipes um, and then obviously there's the fan and whatever else is hiding up inside the wings in here uh, so there's the overflow and something else up there and uh, obviously the fan here uh, on this side uh, and then the other side we've got the big air intake snorkel and uh, so that's going to come off uh, as well so really the last few things on here now is uh, just going to be taking off these last few items now um, before we uh, take it off the subframes. Um, now I'm going to just, uh, I'll take all these bits off uh, tomorrow in the next video, well the next video that comes up I will actually physically do it tomorrow, um, but the video will go up uh, a few days later. Um, 
and then we can do the subframes again as a separate video as the final things before it goes for acid dipping. Uh, so, yeah. Well, there we go. That's uh, my video on how to get the engine out of a Mini. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. I uh, hope that it's all made sense to you as well. Um, like I said in the previous video, I've not actually seen anybody do a really good video of how to get the engine out of a Mini. Uh, so I'm hoping that uh, this video has now accomplished that. Um, I mean, there probably may, probably will be other people who are more skilled at getting it out of, uh, getting the engine out of a Mini uh, than I am because they've probably done it a million times before. This is the very first time I've ever taken an engine out of a Mini, so it's a complete learning curve for me. Um, but I hope that I've been able to demonstrate to you that it's actually very, very simple. And in fact, it's only taken me about four hours, including disconnecting everything um, to take it out today, um, as well as all the previous work that I did uh, in previous video. So anyway, like I said, I hope that you've enjoyed the video. If you have, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Also, do hit the subscribe button because Again, we're going to be following this Mini on its restoration journey, so I don't want you to miss out, so do make sure you hit the subscribe button. And until next time, happy classic motoring.